Hi sports fans, this is Kenito Hanson. And I'm Diane Castillo. We are here to serve Philippine sports on Play It Right TV. And Kenito and I are so excited. We're actually here face to face coming to you in a very, very special event in a special place. Kenito. That's right. We're at Novotel Hotel and we're about to start the press conference, the very first face to face PBA Finals press conference in over two years. So we're very excited. And here on Play It Right TV, We'll make sure we always break down the game and navigate it for you. And before we introduce our guests, we'd like to remind everybody to please like our page, share, and subscribe, and let us know who else you want to see on our show. Well, today we're going to be talking to two teams, Maralco and Ginebra, the rivalry. They're about to start the finals, and we're going to be talking to both squads. Should be pretty exciting. We've got Coach Tim Cohn of Barangay Ginebra talking about the PBA Governor's Cup Finals. Coach Tim, this is your seventh final appearance in the last 14 conferences. Mm -hmm. You've won 23 championships. How special is this? And does it get any more special? Um, well, I think it's especially special. You know, you, you, you as a Ginebra coach, you know, you, you have great responsibility. You know, you have this whole Ginebra nation that, that lives and dies with the team. And I always feel like, you know, I have a, a responsibility to them to, to, to try to get back to this situation. You know, the last, the last uh, bubble we played in, we were terrible. And then we had a, a bad middle of the conference. And I was really getting worried that we weren't going to live up to the, to the responsibility that we had. You know, we, we have that great legacy of Coach Sonny Jaworski that we have to live up to. And it can be really, really difficult. But uh, when we are able to, when we can, you know, get back to the finals, it's always really, really special. But, you know, not necessarily for me, but for all the fans out there. Uh, that's, that's, that's why we coach, that's why we play, and that's why we do the things we do, is to make them happy. Coach, tell us about this journey in the Governor's Cup. You guys were sixth seeded entering mm -hmm. the playoffs, and... Uh, you had to survive uh, several series mm -hmm. to get to the finals. Um, how grueling has this been? And do you think your boys still have enough in their tank to last the series? Well, you know, when we had that four game losing streak in the middle of the conference, uh, basically we were down and out. You know, we had reached the bottom of the barrel. Um, and sometimes you have to reach the bottom of the barrel before you start climbing out. And we finally started to climb out and we were able to get some momentum and, and uh, and I, I thought the key for us, really, that propelled us to where we are right now was that Talking Tech series, being able to beat uh, Talking Tech. So they were on a five-game winning streak. Uh, I know they were the third seed, but they seemed like the first seed yeah. because, you know, the defending championship, defending champions, Chuck Reyes coaching. Uh, we didn't really feel like we had much of a chance. And we won that first game, and that, that kind of, you know, really elevated our, our confidence. And uh, so then we had to go through a second game and then go into the, you know, NLEX and always, Yangyao teams are always, you know, super physical, super relentless, and you had to battle through that and get to where we are now. What I've appreciated at this point is usually when you win the semifinals, it's usually you have one day break and then you go and play mm -hmm. the finals. And it doesn't give you much time to recover nor much time to plan and, you know, perfect your, your, your game planning so the players will look good. Uh, but this time we've had a good four-day break and it's given us a chance to kind of recover physically and uh, I think that's going to show in the series. Uh, both teams are going to be fresh, both teams are going to be honed in their game planning and I think that's going to make it uh, even more of an elevated uh, uh, series. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Do I think we have enough? Yes, I do. I mean, I would love to get Japheth back and uh, uh, that would be huge for us. But, um, you know, we, we've always believed in the next man up philosophy and uh, our guys have proven that in the past that they can step up. And, you know, we have the uh, ultimate weapon also. We have Justin Brownlee. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your ability to pace your players. Looking at the stats, uh, you have three, four players playing heavy minutes, but somehow you have a knack of preserving them for the stretch run and plus bringing out players like Jeff Chan and Joe DeVance to play quality minutes in the course of the game? Well, I, I, there's, there's nothing magic to it. <laughs> um, actually, I was talking to my wife about that. Just uh, She was asking me about it, and it's really just kind of a feel thing. You know, um, I'm not a big believer in bringing an unprepared player onto the floor and hoping 
that he'll play well. You know, uh, he's got to prove it in practice. He's got to prove it in multiple games. Uh, I'm not a believer. I know a lot of coaches are, but you know, a lot of people, you know, put that wild card out there, and you know, maybe he'll perform, maybe he won't. Um, if he performs, he look great. If he doesn't, everybody forgets. But uh, you also end up losing. So uh, I'm not that way. I really, and I, I know I get criticized for it that I overplay players and stuff. But I'm just a big believer that you you go with the players you trust, and you just try to keep them fresh uh, through the course of a uh, of a series, especially, and uh, in the course of a game. But that's really just getting snippets here. You know, I'll go with like a three guard rotation. I I, I envision we have two guards, a point guard and off guard. I'll add a guard to there, and then that's three guards that we rotate into those three positions. And I've been doing that since the you know the old Alaska days with Johnny and Jojo and maybe Kenneth or Johnny and Jojo and Jeffrey and um, and that's just something we've we've continued on. The key for me is trying to keep Justin fresh because we demand so much from him defensively, you know, obviously offensively, um, getting back on defense, running the floor, making the big shots, making you know playing the big moments, and trying to keep him fresh. Uh, so he can play the stretch run at a high level is really, to me, the, the big challenge. Um, and that's that's what we, as a staff, we focus on. They're always reminding me, you know, you got to get Justin a break, you got to do this or that, you know, Richard's telling me this or Olsen. And uh, so we try to manage his minutes more than anybody else's. Well, Coach, you've always said that this is not about you versus Norman Black. No, it's not. Um, but uh, you've had Coach Norman's number in the last three finals of the Governor's Cup. You think this is going to be any different? It's, 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 eh. I, 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 I can't tell you how much I hate that idea that I have his number. Uh, I would hate to be in that position. I mean, I, there's been a lot of people. Ryan Gregorio has had my number in the past. I mean, he would beat me. He swept me in a series. He came back three games to one in a series. I mean, he would find a way to beat me all the time, and he would drive me nuts. Uh, and I'm sure I'm driving Norman nuts all the time too, but you know, it really comes down to, to the players and the execution. And you can throw out from a coaching standpoint all the great game plans that you want and, and you can push all the right buttons, but if your players don't perform and don't perform at the, that, that, that moment, and oftentimes, frankly, it's luck. You know, uh, ball in, in the semifinal series in the first bubble, uh, we were, it was a best of five series. We were 2-2 and uh, um, came down to a game five, a knockout game, a winner go home. And the ball at the last possession uh, got loose and it scrambled to uh, Scotty in the corner. And Scotty picked it up, shot a three and made it. And we win by one point. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, if that ball didn't go to Scotty, it would have gone to somebody else. We wouldn't have won that series. So it, there's a lot of stuff that's involved. So. To say that someone has their number, uh, I just don't, I don't buy into that. And uh, I wish I had something magical that I was doing that was going to be the thing that beats Norman all the time. <laughs> and uh, obviously there's, there's no magic in it. The magic that there is, is in the players and that way they perform. And uh, like I said, I have the ultimate weapon. In all those series against Norman Black, I have the ultimate weapon. And that's Justin Brown. Well, tell us about the opposing import, Tony Bishop. Um, you guys got used to playing against Alan Durham, a completely different yeah. player from Tony Bishop. Um, Bishop brings a lot of versatility, something exactly. that uh, Durham didn't have, although Durham was a lot more powerful underneath the boards. How do you intend to cope with someone like Tony Bishop? Well, if I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that uh, we don't know. You know, I, again, I was talking to the players earlier. Um, during our, our, our video session. And we were really talking about Bishop saying, you know, he is good at so many different things. So if you try to take one thing away, he's still got 90% of his game. Oftentimes, like, a, like an Alan Durham, if you can, it's not easy, but if you can take away his inside game, then that's basically 60, 70% of his game and he's only playing 30% efficient. Um, and that's not easy to do, by the way. I mean, it, it takes a lot to take away that because it's such a huge strength of his. But if you try to take away the inside game of, of, uh, of say, Tony Bishop, you know, that's only 10% of his game, and he's still beating you with 90% of his game. So it's hard to find all the things that, that you can take away from him. That's basically what 
defense is all about. You take away the strengths of the other team, make them play through weaknesses. He doesn't have any obvious out of this world strengths. He has things he does extremely well, many things he does extremely well, but he also doesn't have any weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You know, he he can he can shoot threes, he can shoot uh, perimeter shots, he can drive to the basket, he can post up, he runs the floor, he's a great defender, he's long, he rebounds, he does everything. And kind of similar to what Justin does. So, uh, and that's why Justin's so difficult for other teams to defend, because what do you take away from Justin? And uh, uh, so that's, that's kind of where we are with him at this point. And yes, when we played them in the eliminations, it was a huge adjustment trying to play against him because we didn't quite know what to do. And maybe we have a little better idea now, but it's not going to be about one person stopping him. It's going to be, and, it's, and, it, and he's not going to be our total focus. You know, it's really about beating the system that they play with. And uh, uh, they have a great system. They're unselfish. They pass the ball. They pass the ball more than anybody in the league. We, we have that in, in our uh, analytics. They're the number one passing number of team passes in the league. Maybe not number one in assists, but they are number one in total number of passes that they average in, a, in, a, in the course of a game. So, you know, how do you limit that? And it's not easy trying to figure out a way to limit someone from passing the ball. You can limit them from shooting it, but you can't limit them from passing. Well, Coach, last question. In a long series, which team would have the advantage? In a short series, which team would have an advantage? I don't think either one. I know that you, the, 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 the natural thing will say, well, because we're shorthanded and we don't have Japheth, and then maybe we need to do it in a, in a, shorter, in a shorter time. But I also think that we're also very experienced in, in playing games six and sevens. Uh, so we're not afraid of playing that. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I feel like our guys are now starting to get in shape after not really playing. Justin didn't play for two years and came in and everybody was saying, oh, he can't make shots. What's wrong with Justin? Well, you know, you give him a month to get in shape and look what's happened to him. You know, so uh, I think our guys are, 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 are peaking at the right time. And uh, so I think that it, both teams are good. The Morocco's a very experienced team, and they've played a lot of games six and sevens. It's just against us. So uh, uh, I don't think it's really an advantage for either team, playing uh, long or short. Well, thanks very much. Coach Tim Cohn of Barangay Nebra, anticipating the PBA Governance Cup Finals. We've got Justin Brownlee here. We're all excited about the. PBA Governors Cup Finals. Justin, this is your eighth conference in the PBA. You've won four championships. In the closer against NLEX, you scored 47 points. Was that a statement that you're getting better than ever? Uh, <laughs> not really. <laughs> no, uh, I just want to just come out there and play hard. Uh, you know, I have been getting in better shape, um, into a better rhythm. So uh, just I just went out there and... Uh, you know, just try to be aggressive. I knew it was a closeout game, and Coach Tim was always preaching to us, uh, you got to be the aggressive. So I just wanted to come out there and be aggressive with the mindset of uh, going in the game, trying to close it out, and not playing the game five. Justin, tell us about Tony Bishop. He's a lot different from Alan Durham. You got used to playing Durham in three Governors' Cup finals, but Durham is a power player. Tony Bishop is more of a finesse player. Um, he can do a lot more things than Durham, but he certainly doesn't have the power of a Durham. You think it'll be an easy series for you? How do you defend Bishop? Uh, well, that's a, that's a tough, tough question. Uh, and it's definitely not going to be easy. But uh, like you said, you know, he's different from Durham. And uh, uh, he's more versatile as far as he can play inside. And he plays a lot outside as well. So uh, I don't think we have just the correct answer right now. You know, I think the series will allow us to know how well we can play him. You know, but uh, either way it goes, we know it's going to be a tough, tough matchup for us. Justin, you've always been known as the import yardstick in the PBA, but I know that you rely a lot on your local teammates. Tell us about the support that you're getting from your local teammates. Oh uh, Yeah, they, they've they been incredible always, you know, uh, and I think it starts with, you know, the way they work in practice. Uh, before and after practice, um, you always seeing guys working on their game, uh, trying to get better at their weaknesses. And I think, um, you know, that's the hard part. And they come do the hard part every single day. And um, it reflects um, during the game. Last question. About the process of naturalization, a lot of people are saying, Justin Brownlee, we need you for Gilas. Mm -hmm. If ever that is offered to you to play as a naturalized player for the national team of the Philippines, 
Would you take it? And what would that mean to you? Uh, I'll take it. No, no question. Uh, you know, uh, it definitely would mean a lot. You know, being here in this country since 2016, you know, I got to uh, grow and come close to a lot of people and uh, the fans. And I, and I love it here. And it, it would be definitely an honor to be able to represent the country. Thank you very much, Justin. And best of luck to you in the finals. All right, thank you. All right. Hey, naman, kasama natin si Scotty Thompson, isa sa mga stalwarts ng Barangay Ginebra dito sa PBA Governor's Cup Finals. At Scotty, nung eliminations ng Governor's Cup, natalo ang Ginebra ng Meralco. Naglaro si Japet, pero dito sa ating finals, hindi pa natin sigurado kung maglalaro si Japet. Ano mga natutunan nyo dun sa pagkatalo nyo uh, sa Meralco entering these finals? Uh, yun nga, uh, last elimination na talo kami sa kanila. Uh, yun yung pinapoint out namin kanina sa practice din. Uh, Tinignan namin yung laro na yun. Uh, Siyempre, uh, uh, coming to ano yun eh, from, from break, first game namin yun that time. So, nagkaroon kami ng motivation na yun. And iba pa yung mga game plans namin. And yun nga, the difference uh, this series is wala si Japet. So, uh, next man up for us. Pero for now, uh, Uh, okay naman yung nilalatinatakbo ng team uh, pero still uh, wait, waiting kami kay Japet uh, iba pa rin pag-andyan si Japet sa, sa series na to pero uh, siguro yung adjustment namin coming to last game sa ngayon yung uh, defense namin mas nag-improve yung defense namin uh, uh, gaya uh, hindi tulad nung ano, uh, elimination siguro yung execution sa defense namin mas tighten up na yun Meron kami na po na sa pakitalo nyo sa Meralco First game ni Nard Spinto mm -hmm. with Ginebra. Yung game na yon, galing sa Zemaralco. Gano'ng kalaki yung role ni Nard sa team niyo at uh, especially since galing na siya sa Zemaralco? Uh, yun nga, uh, dati niloloko ko siya siyempre. Uh, close kami ni Nard sa... Uh, niloloko ko siya dati kaya ano kami natalo. <laughs> Pero ano, ang laking bagay sa amin si Nard siya especially wala si Stanley. So siya yung uh, nag-step up for us uh, para magam magampanan yung role ni Stanley para sa amin. And uh, mostly, especially uh, sa defense, hustle and sa sinard. So, uh, at saka nagdadala ng bola for us. Ang laking bagay for us talaga kasi lalo-lalo uh, na ngayon against Meralco. So nakakapagtanong kami sa kanya ng, uh, kung ano na, 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 na alala niya pa sa mga game plan ng Meralco kahit pa paano. So, so meron kayong spia? Meron kayong spia. <laughs> Um, Scotty, marami nagsasabi malalim ang rotation ni Coach Norman sa Meralco at uh, ang Hinebra kukunti lang kayong uh, guma, guma, gumagawa ng napakaraming minuto sa tingin mo, magpapago ba yun? sa tingin mo, yung rotation nyo eh, la, mas lalalim sa finals? Uh, siguro for us uh, no, uh, yun nga, uh, sa mga practices namin talagang Uh, nare-ready ng mga coaching staff yung mga uh, bench namin uh, yung conditioning nila talagang uh, uh, binabakbak sila ngayon kasi para ready kami lahat this, uh, this series pero uh, yun nga, sinasabi mo kung magbabago pa siguro for sure kasi mahabang series to eh, sobrang haba so para sa amin uh, kung sino talaga yung uh, makakatulong sa team, makapag-contribute uh, sobrang laking bagay sa amin against Meralco kasi we all know talagang ang lalim ng bench nila, ang dami nilang Uh, mahuhugot ang player so mura siguro mag-step up yung mga uh, nabanggit mo nga Scotty baka humaba itong series na to in a long series kung 6 or 7 sino ang lamang at in a short series kung 4 or 5 sino ang lamang uh, sa akin long series uh, or tinanong mo oh, sa long or short uh, for me siguro hindi short series to kasi uh, alam mo naman meral ko talagang uh, Uh, sobrang hirap kalaban and then uh, battle of adjustment sa mga coaching staff uh, kay Coach King, kay Coach Norman siguro long series for me, syempre Hinebra okay. <laughs> Last question ko, para kay Scotty Thompson Scotty, marami din nagtatanong ano ba ang sekreto mo? kasi kumisa na out-rebound mo pati yung mga import na mas malaki sa'yo ano ang sekreto sa iyong leaping ability, sa timing at pagka out-rebound mo sa mga imports? Ayun nga, dami rin nagtatanong sa akin kahit mga teammates ko sa sila Brian. Uh, for me siguro yung determination ko lang sa uh, sa bola, yung gusto ko magbigyan extra points yung uh, uh, extra possession yung team. Pero kung sekreto, wala siguro siguro ano, gift sa gift siguro for me na nakakaganan ako na parang naamoy ko yung bola. 
Yeah. That desk is carry time, so yeah. good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Norman Black, welcome to the uh, yeah. ITV. I mean, so exciting for you to be in the final. You know, you're, I know you're 3 and 0 versus 0 and zero 3. three. <laughs> 0 and 3 versus Ginebra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can make history this time? This very special uh, conference post COVID? Every series is different. And. You know, you enter the series very optimistic that you can win. Mm -hmm. And obviously what happens within the series really determines whether you actually do or not. Yeah. We've had some unfortunate injuries against them in the past. Uh, last time it was uh, uh, Raymond Almazan. We had uh, uh, Jared Dillinger go down one time in the middle of the series. Uh, we lost um, Ranadel Del Campo in one of the series also. So I'm just hoping that we can stay healthy this time. And if we can stay healthy, I think we have a very, very good chance of beating them. What advantage do you think you have this time around, if anything, against Inebra, given everything that's happened the last two years and all that? Well, like I said, if you stay healthy, that's the key. That's the number one thing. But if we do, then obviously our team is much better now than it was two years ago when we last played them because we didn't play them last yeah, year we played them two years that. ago uh we're, we're a much better team we picked up players who are very talented and i think we only have four players from our last championship appearance with them still on the team yeah so there's been a lot of um new players coming in for us very talented players um in addition to that uh i just think we're a better team this year yeah well you and can we, um, have played well this conference. Uh, we were able to pick up Chris Bonchero, who helped us a lot in the middle of the conference. So, um, in addition to that, they're, they're missing some key players right now. Right, Stanley right, Pringle's yeah. not there, Jafford Aguilar is still out. Yeah. So, like I said, injuries can play an important role when it comes to these type of games. You can feel when, you know, when the never team speak is that they're super going to be on their toes versus Miralco. They keep saying you've improved yes. so much, you're like such a better team. And, you know, like you were saying, so many new players. I think that hunger factor, that freshness is going to play a big role here. What do you think? Well, I think you just have a feel when you know you have a good chance. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean anything as far as the games are concerned. You still have to go out and play the games. And, yeah. and the games are won on the basketball court, not in the interview. So um, it's still important that we go out and play well. Um, but this time around, I just feel like um, we're hungry for it. Yeah. And I have the talent now to get it done. Right, uh, I always right. thought that I was in a disadvantage as far as talent when I went up against them in the past. I don't feel that way right now. So you just got to go out there and play the hard. You know, one of the things that never always has going for them is they have the six men. Yes. They have the crowd. Yeah. And uh, there was a movie with Kevin Cosner. Uh, called uh, for the love of the game. Uh -huh. I think we just have to turn that mechanism on okay. and tune out the crowd and just go out and do the best we can and perform well because we know the crowd will be there and they'll be supporting the network. Yeah. And um, Coach Norman, I remember during COVID, I did a feature on, with you and your son. You were training. That's correct. Yes. Right. And uh, now to you That's know the beginning to, of it. Yes. yes. To have him on the team and in the finals. How how awesome does that feel for you? Well. Still a little inconsistent, okay. and I wish he could be a little bit more efficient. But he has proven that he can play in the PBA. He came up big for us in our last game against Magnolia, yes. uh, where he stepped in uh, the starting point guard position and played very well in the replacement of uh, Chris Bancaro. So um, yeah, he's getting a lot of good experience, and he's ready to go. He's, yeah. in, he's a hard worker, and he's in good health, so he's ready to play. And uh, Justin Brownlee is known to reserve his best for last and really show up in mm -hmm. finals appearances. How do you plan to hold him down? Well, that's a problem. Uh, Justin is definitely a problem. Uh, he's one of the best imports ever to play here, in my opinion. And what's good about him is he's always productive when the games are on the line. And he's always productive towards the end of the tournament. Mm -hmm. And looks like he's in really good shape right now, really good condition. And he's been performing well in their last few games. So that's going to be a problem. Um, I haven't really decided whether we're going to be double teaming him or playing him straight up or triple teaming him. But uh, he certainly is at the top of the list when it comes to our defense and how we're going to try to control the Hinepper team.
right. Well, good luck, coach. Thank you. Nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tony Bishop here from Aralco. Welcome to Play Right TV. Thank you. And congratulations for being in the finals. Um, you had a very grueling um, battle with Magnolia. Mm -hmm. What part of that game, that winning game, are you going to take to the final versus Ginebra? Uh, we learned a lot, offensively and defensively as a team. You know, um, Magnolia was, uh, was a great team. Defensively, they're very aggressive, you know, and offensively, they're, they're, they're smart players, you know, and um, we was able to pull it out. And um, it was just great for us to uh, come together as a team and just really just battle hard each and every uh, position. And, and we show what we're capable of to do as long as we fight and stay together. Well, I'm sure you've heard about the history of uh, Maralco and Ginebra. You, uh, Maralco hasn't won against them. Um, and yeah. Justin Brownlee, you know, always tending to show up big. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, special weapons that you want to bring to this to be able to get the win this time for Morocco? <laughs> I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to you know, let my players do the talking. You know, uh, we know that they're a great team. We know that they won a lot of championships. And we know that we know JB is, is a really good player as well. So, you know, we're just going to continue to just play our game, you know, and just yeah, see what we can do each and every game. All right. And you came from Puerto Rico mm -hmm. um, before coming here. Yep, yep. Um, what do you think you learned from there that you think is going to be very useful here? Well, um, in that yeah, uh, well, this is like my 12th year professional, and um, uh, I've won a championship before, but I just came from Puerto Rico where we were in the finals and we lost 4-2. Oh. So, so just learning um, about about the, the environment more, you know what I'm saying, about how to uh, different parts of the game, how we can be better on offense and defense, and just helping your teammates and just figuring out ways to win the basketball game. And you know the Ginebra fans are really loud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the, uh, you're going to be loud every game. Mm -hmm. and I, I know you have your fans too. So yes. are you a master of shutting out all the sound Keeping around composure. you? Keeping Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to. When I was in Puerto Rico, we was uh, averaging, I think, forty thousand. Wow. Yeah, twenty thousand. Some some games. Yeah, semifinals. But we we end up knocking off the uh, reigning champs in the semifinals, and they they, they pack their gym every game. Nice. And then against in the final, it was very packed. So you know, just have to keep it composed. That's, that's what it's about. You know, and just continue to play the game. So no problem for you. Uh, you can deal with the uh, Hinebra fans. Well, it should be an exciting series, and we're looking forward to it. Thanks for chatting. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Pumunta ka sa game 5 ng semifinals at paano mo na iwasan ang depensa to get uh, at paano mo gagawin yun ulit sa Hinebra? Um, Magnolia and Hinebra is different uh, system. No? Magkaiba sila ng personal, magkaiba sila ng depensa and um, makikita mo more on sa Magnolia mas physical and compared dito naman sa coming into Hinebra um, games um, they have ano, a good system na uh, they, they parang protect the paint so um, hopefully I can sustain my ano, my offensive uh, uh, power dito sa, sa championship series na to kasi it's gonna be a key factor being consistent lalo dito sa championship series against Ginebra kasi it's really tough to beat Ginebra talagang need to consistency not only me but the whole collective effort ng, ng buong team namin no? um, yung, yung playing against your former team diba? mahirap ba yun sa'yo or okay ka na at uh, ano ba yung uh, mindset mo coming into coming into this finals knowing nga na alam mo kilala mo rin yung sistema ng Ginebra uh, yeah, it's, it's my, one of my ano, former team. Actually, uh, every time na uh, nakasaro ko, it gives you ex added motivation no? uh, to, to play at your best. Kasi especially, former coach ko din si coach team. So, parang I need to, I need to um, prove myself na I already um, gotten so much better. I already matured and compared dun when I, when I was playing with him. So, um, I need to prepare myself talaga kasi he knows me, he knows me oh, more than anyone, more yeah. than anyone. So, yun. How hungry are you para makuha itong title? Sabi nga ni Coach Norman na he feels like he has the weapons this time. Mm -hmm. Now, healthy kayo, he up, you up, he has the talent to do it. Um, at, this, at this point of my career, no, there's nothing, there's nothing on my mind but to win the championship. Kasi it's, it's a different feeling when, when I was in San Mid Coffee with playing with coach team. I'm just a, a role player, a reliever. But right now, I'm having a role sa, sa team ko na 
uh, parang key contributor na alam mo yon it's mm -hmm. it's a fulfillment nice meeting, uh, it's yes. a, it's a fulfillment na you're one of the key reason to to win the first championship for Meralco and um, I don't know I, actually I imagine I'm I'm imagining myself um, winning the championship with this trophy yeah with this trophy so <laughs> I kind of get uh, emotional sometimes so parang all the ha all the hard work pays off sa lahat ng sacrifices and lahat ng nangyari sa career ko before na parang ito eventually I, I had the chance and um, hopefully hindi namin masayang yun nga sinasabi ko sa mga teammates ko wag natin sayang itong chance na to kasi sobrang hirap makapasok ulit sa finals All the best! Thank you ma'am! Well we hope that you enjoyed our episode here on Plate Right TV today Kinito and I are just so happy to be coming to you face to face and be able to interact with the players as sports has restarted in the Philippines and the PBA is having a full crowd for the finals it's wonderful because this is the first time that the PBA finals will be played before a live audience in two and a half years and this is the baby that everyone's going to be looking for the trophy for the Governor's Cup championship this is what it's all about Barangay Nebra and Morocco will slug it out for this baby right here Best of seven finals. We hope that you are going to enjoy the series as much as we expect to. Maraming salamat. We'll see you next time here on Tate Right TV. I'm Diane Casillejo. And this is Kirito Hanson. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell button. And we're always here for you. Plate Right TV.